Hi everyone, in today's lesson we're going to talk about how to solve rational equations. First we need to define what a rational equation is. So a rational equation is just simply an equation made up of fractional terms. And the key word here is equations. Up until this point we've only done rational expressions where we don't actually solve for anything but we just have an expression. So now we're going to have equal signs. So the goal is going to be to solve. So how do we do that? So to solve a rational equation, we actually have a little bit of um, a change here. So let's just cross all this off. This is one way to do it, but I would like to teach it in another way. Uh, so to solve a rational equation, we must find, so we could say we must find a LCD or a least common denominator for all denominators. And then we're going to cross it off. All right, so that's going to be our procedure moving forward. If you need to pause the video to write this down, feel free to do so. And then hit resume when you're ready to continue. All right, so the next thing you have to remember is that these fractions have undefined values that must be rejected before circling your final answer. We'll talk about that as we do it, but here are the steps you know to look back on if you're ever confused. So let's look at example number one. So our first step was we need to find a least common denominator for all three of these pieces. Well, we have an x, similar here, and an x plus one. So all we really need is this side, needs an x, and this side needs an x plus 1. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top, and since this has an x, this also needs an x plus 1. So now my denominator has an x plus 1 and an x, an x plus 1 and an x, an x plus 1 and an x. And what we're allowed to do here is now that we have the same denominator, what we're allowed to do is cross off that common denominator and simply solve the numerator. Um, so we can highlight the part that we're going to solve. So this times this plus this times this equals this times this. So if we want to write it out, it would be x plus 1 times x plus 1 then plus x minus 1 times x plus 1 equals x times x plus 6. I like to put the single guy first. It's just easier for me to simplify. So let's go ahead and solve it. So in here, we're going to double distribute x plus 1 times x plus 1 squared. Just for purposes of time, I'm going to tell you what it is. Uh, that is after you double distribute. Here, we're going to double distribute these two, and you'll notice that the middle terms will cancel. So you'll just be left with x squared minus 1. If you need to pause the video and do the double distributing on the sides, that's fine, but just trust me that these are the two answers for that. And then we're left with equals x squared plus 6x. So now the idea is going to be to solve this equation for x. So I'm going to combine like terms on my left side. So I have an x squared and an x squared. Uh, that's going to add to 2x squared. I have a 1 and a negative 1 that are going to cancel. So I can go ahead and just cancel those right away. And I just have a 2x left over. And I have equals x squared plus 6x. And now I'm going to set it equal to 0, right? That's how we solve quadratics. So we're going to subtract the x squared and simultaneously subtracting the 6x. So we get 1x squared minus 4x equals 0. And remember, we have to remember all of our factoring techniques. x squared minus 4x is nothing other than GCF. So we're going to take out a GCF of x. And we're left with x minus 4. And t-chart. We have x equals 0 and x minus 4 equals 0. Simply add 4 and we get x equals 4. So here's one answer and here's another answer. 
Now, before I had mentioned something about checking for undefined values. So that's something that we want to look for. So remember, an undefined value makes a fraction equal to zero on the bottom. So here's one fraction, here's another fraction, and here's a third fraction. Here are the three denominators that we care about. So we're going to set each of the denominators equal to zero. And that will figure out our undefined values. So undefined values, we're going to set each of the denominators equal to zero. So my first denominator is x, so x equals zero is the first undefined value. My second denominator is x plus one, so we set that equal to zero, and we solve. So my undefined values are negative one and zero. So we're checking, did I get negative one or zero in these two answers? Well, I got zero, didn't I? So all that means is that we're going to take zero and reject it because it makes the original fraction undefined. That's it, that's solving a rational equation. All right, let's try example number two. So again, first step is that we're going to need to try to find a common denominator for all three parts. So this one's a little interesting. You know, in this one, we just gave, you know, this denominator what the other one had. But what I'm looking here is I'm looking that this is a combination of these two. So I'm gonna try to factor this denominator first. I can actually divide out a three. And by doing so, I'm left with y minus 6. So you can see that this denominator has a 3 and a y minus 6. And if this denominator just has a y minus 6, then all it really needs is a 3. So I'm going to multiply this by 3. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. And now this has a 3, so it just needs the y minus 6. So whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. And now once we find that same common denominator for all three pieces, we get to simply cross off the denominator and set the tops equal to each other. So what are we left with? We're left with 2y plus 1 minus 15. Where did I get 15 from? 5 times 3. And then equals 1 times y minus 6 is just y minus 6. And then we solve. We combine any like terms that we have on the left. So we, here we have 1 and negative 15. So we have 2y minus 14 equals y minus 6. This one's not a quadratic, so it's actually a bit easier. Just subtract y on both sides. So we get 2y minus y is y. y minus 14 equals negative 6. Add Oops, excuse me, add 14 on both sides, and we get y equals 14 minus 6, which is 8. Now, before we can make sure that this is our final answer, we have to check for our undefined values. So remember, we're setting each of the denominators equal to 0. So my first denominator is this 3y minus 18. So I'm going to solve by setting that equal to 0. So we add 18 and we divide by three. So six is my first undefined value. Then I have y minus six is my second denominator. So y minus six equals zero. Add six to both sides. My undefined value is six. And then the last denominator is this three right here. Um, and if I set three equal to zero, that kind of makes no sense, so we just reject it. So since I got six and, well, they're both six actually. Six is my undefined value and I got eight as my answer. I get to keep it and I don't have to reject it. So again, we're only rejecting these undefined values. All right, let's move on to the back. All right, I'd actually like you to try uh, problems, practice problems one and two on your own. Uh, and then we'll go over them in class over the next couple of days. Um, the first one, I'm gonna give you a hint where you may want to factor this and see if it's a combination of these two. That's my first hint. My second hint is be careful about this negative sign. Remember, if there's a negative and a binomial on top, something like x minus 1, you may have to distribute that negative. So keep that in mind. If you're one of those people that think you might forget that, 
feel free to make this plus a negative one and then solve the problem like normal and you won't get the wrong answer. All right, my hint for number two is that there is no fraction here, right? So me, first thing, we want to make this a fraction by putting it over one. The second thing is to recognize that these guys are opposite factors. So you may want to multiply one of them by a negative one. And then you might want to play around with trying to make that common denominator. So do the best that you can. And then, like I said, we'll go over these questions in class. All right, that's it for tonight. Have a great night.